Okay. Uh, welcome to the Township Committee meeting December 7th of 2020 via Zoom remote access. Uh, normally held at uh, 7 p.m. the municipal building at 770 Cooperstown Road. This is being held virtually and remotely. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. Mr. Brown. Here. Mrs. Patrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. And Mr. Templeton. Here. Also present, Mr. Schwab, our Township Administrator, Mr. Fox, our Township Engineer, Mr. Heinhold, our Township Solicitor, Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Court Clerk, Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk, John, Mr. Fenimore, Superintendent of Public Works, and uh, Chief DeSanto, Chief of Police. Have I missed anyone? And Aaron Provenzano, Technical Empresario. So, all right. Uh, Mrs. Lohr, would you uh, read the Sunshine Statement, please? please. Dispense with the flag salute as we have during these virtual meetings. Uh, sunshine, sunshine statement, please. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the December 27, 2019 editions. Written notice has been posted on, on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. And the remote access meeting notice option uh, has also been given and um, pursuant to various executive orders. And the, tonight's meeting is uh, scheduled for December 7, 2020, is available via electronic format for members of the public who wish to participate in the meeting remotely. And um, we have the various login, Zoom information, meeting ID, passcode um, that has been uh, properly uh, posted on the website and on the front window and bulletin board. We have a remote public meeting uh, meeting statement. Advanced public comments uh, will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. All advanced comments must be received no later than six hours prior to commencement of the published public meeting start time. And all advanced comments must be submitted to the municipal clerk's office, municipal clerk's email, or to the municipal clerk's attention at 770 Cooper Town Road, Delancey, New Jersey. Um, and for the record, I received no advance comments or questions prior to the start of the meeting. And also too, we have procedures for making comments. Members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the public meet comment sessions may either make their comments via audio option or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option uh, do, uh, during that time when the meeting is open to the public. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, anyone entering a ch uh, chat during any other time of the meeting may or may not uh, that post may not be may or may not be read during the meeting um, and members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive as defined by NJAC 539-1 at SEC may be muted after initial warning for the duration of the public comment session or the remainder of the remote meeting session. The agenda for this remote meeting is available on the Del Delanco Township website www.delancotownship.com under agendas. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Uh, year 2021 Community Development Block Grant Application Public Hearing. Uh, before I open it up for public comment, uh, Mr. Schwab or Mr. Fox, do you have any um, comments or explanatory? Yeah. Um what uh, we are applying, the, the township is applying for um, a community development block grant. Uh, these funds are um, supplied by Housing and Urban Development HUD um, and they're administered by the county, uh, Burlington County. Um, with those funds, they have to be used for certain purposes. Um, they can either be used for um, accessibility issues anywhere in town, or you can do any improvements in town on, on, on public property um, within certain census tracts if they meet certain criteria. Um, Delanco does have a, a census tract that qualifies um, and this grant is to install sidewalk on uh, Cooperstown Road um, from Hickory Street to Pennsylvania Avenue uh, and that is in the census tract. So we have to have a public hearing in accordance with HUD regulations so any, anyone from the public can put in, have input into to the project at this time. 
Um, once we apply, it, 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 it's awarded by the county um, and the funding would be awarded for, for the next year, for the fiscal year 2021. I can only add that uh, based on our engineer's estimate, the 78,000 that's available would pay for a portion of the work. Uh, he's estimated could be as much as 170,000 because of the need for drainage improvements. We'll know till uh, there's been more engineering. So uh, we have 40,000 uh, in our budget for sidewalk work, which we're gonna do for our building, our municipal building and public works, which we could apply to that. So you would have to assume you could authorize between 60 and 100,000 in a new capital authorization in 2021 to match the CDBG monies in order to do the project. So we have to be prepared to do that. The other issue is we have one year from the signing of the contract to complete the job or they won't reimburse us. Uh, so therefore, uh, timing is, is part of it. We're not sure when that contract will start. Might not be until spring, which means county contract. So we may have a year till then. So there's a lot of work to do in a relatively short period of time because whatever the engineer proposes and you're willing to finance, he has to get the county to agree to county engineering department, not CDBG, uh, because we'll be doing work in the county right away. He's indicated they preliminarily indicated they would be supportive of a project, but depends on what it is, obviously. Thank you, Richard. Are there any questions or comments from the committee before I open it up to the public? So I know that we haven't been successful getting the safe streets to, to transit grants in the past. Is there any benefit to applying anyway? Can we like piggyback them? Um, for what isn't going to be covered by the C CBDG, um, can we use additional grant resources if we were to actually win? win, win? Harry? We, we, we technically, we, we could. Um, like I said, we, we applied uh, three times and, and didn't receive anything. Now those right. grants generally are give you more money if you get them but it's very competitive to, to, to get. Um, it, it's for the amount of money, it's probably not worth the process of going through the application and then all the extra paperwork and, and you'd have to have fiscal shares and there'd be a lot more involved to the project for, for the amount of money that you would be borrowing. Do they ever give feedback for why we haven't been eligible or, or deemed worthy of it in the past? Like does the increase in warehousing that we've on give us you know, I, I, yeah i've never gotten any feedback um those grants have been basically generally done by the bridge commission for for the town um the bridge commission doesn't do that anymore but they at, at one time they would do all the work to, to apply for the grants um and i've just i've never heard any feedback just that we haven't received it thank you You're welcome. uh mary I've, I've got one one detail question does the um, particularly in the section between on from Hickory Street along Cooper Street up to the railroad tracks, would work uh, be uh, work on both sides of the road? Um, be, no, this would just be the one side. Be just uh, the one side within right, the side that has the existing sidewalk on it now. Okay, all right. Okay, at this time, uh, the hearing is now open to the public for the year 2021 community development block grant application, please. Uh, if you have any comments or questions for anyone on the uh, township or the staff here, uh, please state your name and address and your question, please. Thank you. You see any questions coming in, Mrs. Yeah. Lord? I, um, if any members of the public would like to have, if they have any questions or comments, regarding the uh, community development block grant application, please unmute uh, yourself and or type it into the chat function. And this is the public hearing for the community development block grant application, uh, which is due December 18th. That's the last day to apply. So a resolution um, to approve is later on your agenda. Yes, yes, you have that in your consent agenda, a resolution which would approve that application. Right. Unless you change your mind based on the public hearing. Yeah. Yep. So at this time, any members of the public, please unmute yourself or type something into the chat. Let me see. I have to bring up the chat. 
I don't see anything. Okay, hearing no comments or questions from the public, the hearing is now closed to the public on the uh, community development block grant application. Mm -hmm. and we fulfilled that requirement. Next item, uh, ordinance 2020-14, amending chapter 295, governing vehicles and parking. This is the second reading by title only in public hearing. Uh, the hearing is now open to the public for ordinance 2020-14 only. Are there any comments on this item of uh, this ordinance? Again, the public is asked that if anyone has any comments or questions, please unmute yourself or uh, type your um, comment or question into the chat function at the bottom um, on your screen for a uh, public hearing for ordinance 2020-14, amending chapter 295, governing vehicles and parking. And somebody just sent me a message. Yeah. It's to uh, add 83 feet at the end of Maple Avenue, the railroad tracks to the no parking section. So public works equipment can get through. All right, any comments or questions coming in? I don't see or hear anything. Hearing is now closed to the public. Uh, motion please for ordinance 2020-14. So moved. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by, I believe, Mr. Alette. A second by, who got that? Kate. Kate, thank you. Roll call please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Letts. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. And uh, thank you to Mr. Fenimore and Mr. Uh, or Chief DeSanto for working that out. Uh, public comment statement. Purpose of the public comment session is to allow residents to share information and reviews with the Blanco Township Committee. The committee may be hearing the information for the first time. It is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. And uh, do I need to read the, that second part, report of advanced remote meeting? That's what you covered in the preliminary, correct? Mr. Right, Mayor. There were no advanced, comment, advanced comments or questions prior to the start of the meeting. Meeting is now open to the public for questions, comments. Uh, hi there. Uh, this is uh, Stephen McLaughlin. I live at 740 Rancocas Avenue. Good evening. What's on your mind? Uh, well, I'm here to talk about the uh, proposed name change for the uh, Delanco Historic Preservation Advisory Board. I uh, see that's on the agenda uh, for continued discussion later. Uh, I just wanted to speak up, well, first of all, I'm a member of that aforementioned board. I just wanted to speak up in favor of uh, changing the name. Um, so the, the, proposed, the proposal is changing it from Delanco Historic Preservation Advisory Board to Delanco History Board. Um, to me, it seems like a, a really big improvement. Um, the, the first, you know, the current name is really quite a mouthful uh, and it's awkward for social media. I mean, it's hard to uh, basically, to me, by the time you get through reading a sentence that includes that phrase or that name, it, it's almost putting you to sleep, um, which, it, you know, I, I don't think is, you know, history is boring or, or stodgy or, or any of those things. I think, you know, basically, I think Delanco History Board is a more kind of dynamic, recognizable, snappier name. Um, and there's a, the reason we want to move quickly on this is because we're planning publications and, uh, some public signage, uh, for circulation, hopefully sometime soon in the, in uh, 2021 and, uh, and public signs in particular will be public for a long time, potentially for years. And so it would be awkward to change our name after we've already made those signs. Um, thank you. So, yep, that, uh, there you go. <laughs> hope, hope you'll, uh, help, let, help us, uh, let us change our name. Thank you. Very good. Appreciate the comments. Uh, are there any? Uh, I think we had a little yes. discussion on this at the last meeting. Anybody? I would like to make a comment. Here. Has a question? Wants to pose that to uh, Mr. McLaughlin or uh, uh, any other members of the I history would, board? Mayor, I'd like to make a comment. Please. Uh, John Paye, 101 W Lane. Uh, Janice, I didn't read my email till just before the meeting. So I forward, I re-forwarded the letter that I had sent to you before Thanksgiving. So um, I'm obviously speaking on behalf of the advisory board. Uh, I 
mailed a uh, letter to Janice to distribute before your meeting, which I don't believe you received. I, I don't know if you want to hear the letter that I've written at this time, or you want to review it later. Uh, that, was, a, that was forwarded this afternoon to everyone, and we actually even have it in the queue that Aaron can put up if anyone didn't get the chance to check their uh, email oh, okay. the, uh, this afternoon before the meeting. So um, I see some people are shaking their head that they did get it, did receive it. So right. um, and Thank you, Janice. I appreciate that. So I there's no sense in reiterating the letter, but I also would uh, uh, very highly recommend recommend the board to consider changing our name. Um, it, the proposed name would allow our communication to be quickly identifiable and the proposed name I think makes us more current with the times. Uh, so um, I would hope the board would agree and approve our request. So right. thank you. Appreciate the, appreciate the comments. Uh, any questions thank from you. the committee on this, this issue since we had a, a long discussion about it last time? Um. No, I don't have, my comment is that we should move in favor of the name change. I was in favor of it at the last meeting and I am in favor of it. Uh, I continue to be in favor of it, it just makes sense. Okay, any other questions, comments on any other topic from the public? All right, this uh, public comments question section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Comments and reports. Uh, We'll start off with uh, Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator. Thank you. Yeah, I have a number of things. One, uh, we're I'm getting, I've got most of the budget information of 2021. And there's, when you go to the discussion section, you'll be talking about meeting schedule. You should be thinking about the budget work sessions, which we generally have the fourth Monday of the month, and whether or not thinking of your schedule, whether we can do it at two, three, four in the afternoon versus in the evening. And, and uh, the first one is when we have the, the major department heads there. Then also the uh, second meeting in February generally is where we have uh, the groups come to your meeting along with the auditor. So I'm um, hoping that those things uh, can be resolved. Uh, you have a resolution to follow up on the copy machine lease that uh, you authorized the last meeting, but it's in your uh, agenda formally so that uh, hopefully you don't have any questions on that. The other major thing I'm working on is Field of Dreams bids for uh, field maintenance. Uh, we have another uh, round to do. Uh, I work with uh, uh, Scott Taylor on uh, updating them to be a little tighter on uh, reporting by the contractor, dealing with some irrigation system issues, things that we learned from problems uh, in the last couple of years. And we also added the option to get a price for when we complete the new lawn area so that we'll know what it would be to have this contractor also cut and uh, do all the maintenance on that area. So we have that number built in. It's a one-year contract with two additional one-year uh, renewal options at the township's uh, choice. Hopefully I have everything done. I'll get it out to rec and uh, we'll try to get it advertised uh, this week or the beginning of next week. The goal is to uh, receive the bids January 5th and then you can award it at your second meeting in January, your first meeting in February, in effect of February 15th. We'll have a non-mandatory pre-bid meeting on December 22nd. So that's the time frame to make sure we uh, get enough people to make their proposals. Um, also, Janice is working with uh, Paul Hardifer on the renewal of third party uh, construction inspection uh, bidding for uh, fire subcode electrical and plumbing that we use a third party agency for. So we have to do that. We'll be bringing that to you uh, in January meeting. Uh, we got notified by the county contractor that the crosswalk lights for Franklin, Burlington Avenue crossing Franklin are still a couple of weeks out there waiting for the poles to be delivered and for PSNG to put in the meter. So maybe it'll be done by the end of the year. Keep our fingers crossed on that. And uh, the last thing to mention is something that we explained last year, that we got notification by our joint insurance fund that uh, we again are part of what they call their retrospective uh, program, where in the last six years, and then again, they look at the last three years, our claims, costs, or reserves 
have been higher than what we've brought in. And when that happens, there's several municipalities in the joint insurance fund, uh, rather than increasing our rates to cover that, they basically say, if we sign an agreement, they tell us the amount, in this case, last year was 15,000, this case is 13,000. If we don't have that situation in the next four years, then we won't have to pay that. But if for some reason our claims jump up, because uh, these, these were kind of a couple one-shot deals, our ambulance issue, we had a workers' comp claim and so on. So if we don't have any major claims in the last next four years, we won't have to pay that. So instead of making us pay it and not find out uh, that it wasn't necessary actuarially, they've set up this program. So I'll send out a more detailed um, email with uh, the, the data and there'll be resolution on your next agenda to authorize this program. So I'm just giving you a little heads up on that. Uh, you have the assessor's report and I think that's all I have right now. Thank you. Great. Very good, thank you. Uh, oh, um, let's see, no, that is it, you're right, that's it. Third party inspection, got that, okay. Uh, professionals, let's see, uh, let's start off with Mr. Heinold. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just want to point out that we have made some good progress on one Hawk Island. It's on your agenda for first reading as part of the consent agenda. Um, things moved actually much more expeditiously than I thought they would with the title company. So that was uh, good news. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about that uh, later on in the meeting. And Mayor, I think everything else I have is on for discussion or executive. So I'll hold it until then. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Fox, I think you've got a lot tonight. All right. There you go. He muted himself. He muted. Hello, Harry. Hold on, I'm gonna ask him to unmute himself. All right. You're calling Harry, correct? Yes. Oh, wait, I see him. He's shaking his head. He's trying. <laughs> hmm. He dropped off there. Let's, yep. uh, Aaron. You can. You're gonna. Can, can you continue to try to get hold of him, or? Yes, I'm gonna. I'm gonna work right. on that. You guys can. All right. Uh, let's move on to department heads while you're doing that, uh, Chief DeSanto. Okay. Did that work? <laughs> you're on. Okay. The uh, I'll address the uh, first issue. Um, I know there were some questions. Uh, I requested a, um, a resolution for the renewal of what they called a 1033 program. And in layman's terms, all it is is transfer of excess uh, owned equipment by the military to law enforcement. Now there's a myriad of uh, categories and the suggestion by actually the state police is who our contact person is. So, you know, the state police recommends to uh, pass a resolution that was sampled and allow for the multiple categories because they're constantly changing. And then uh, if you saw in the email, there was a chart which was A through Q and each item listed on there could fall within one of those codes, A through Q. And the explanation I got is, for instance, a pickup truck could be an A, a B or a C just based on the minor change of what's equipped with. Mm -hmm. This is the third year of the program. We have yet to acquire anything. And uh, the, like I said, the, the name of the program or their program is owned by military transferred. So most equipment, some exceptions, usually it's uh, computers or some type of item like that, where the, after one year, the, the agency owns it, but for the majority of the um, equipment, say uh, say we get an ATV, 
or we get a side-by-side, -side, or we get a pickup truck, a four-by-four -four pickup truck, or the terrain of Hulk Island or, or the dunes. That equipment is owned by the military. It's not ours. What we do is we're borrowing it and we're responsible for the maintenance of it. And when we're done with it, we have no more need for it. We have two choices, to give it back to the military or transfer it to another law enforcement agency. Um, so that's how the program works in terms of we don't purchase anything. It's a loan to us, the majority of the items. Like I said, some of the non, you know, non big or large items, uh, you know, we could own after one year and we can sell at auction, just like we do our own township property. And we've been very laser focused. That's the reason why we haven't acquired anything. I've given direction to uh, Detective Epifano, who's the, who's the uh, lead person for this program. Uh, what you do is you go on a website and you scour through and look for the items which you, know, you believe your department needs. Uh, my direction to him is SUV, a, uh, some type of sedan that we can use for a detective vehicle and get rid of uh, the vehicle that we have and, and utilize that instead you know, they try to save the township money. Um, looking for a, some type of ATV side-by-side -side to address the issues at uh, Hawk Island. So that's why we haven't really acquired anything mm -hmm. because we're kind of pinpointing exactly what we want. Now, and also there's, you know, there's some, I guess, logistic responsibilities. If you find a piece of equipment, these are you know, located in regional surplus areas. Mm -hmm. So I think the closest to us is Maryland. So we would be responsible to go pick it up, bring it back. So um, like I said, I've been pretty focused on exactly what we want. Uh, do not any, I do not want any weapons because then you run into the problem of not having the exact same weapon that you have issued throughout the department. So um, some, some uh, weapon related things like um, they have this item, it's called a red dot. I don't know if anybody's familiar firearms but basically what it is is it, it's a it's not a laser but it's an item that replaces the sight for a rifle a rifle needs to be zeroed in um, for each individual officer so with the, the red dot which is usually a couple hundred dollars and we we you know we almost had the opportunity to get 12 of them one for each officer and that would replace the sight so the officers doesn't have to worry about zero in the rifle to their particular, you know, um, specs. Every officer has a, you know, a zero um, uh, in numbers where they have a, a number for the front sight, number for the rear sight. That every shift they got to zero out at the end of the shift and the new officer has got to put his sights to where it is. So in order to, uh, that's just one small item, like I said, that, you know, we're not getting any armored vehicles or anything like that because that is an item, in my opinion, that's going to sit around in the parking lot once every three years, and then you're going to use it and it's just going to collect rust and you're going to be paying for maintenance of it. So that's the purpose of the program. And uh, if I didn't explain it well enough or you have any questions, go ahead and <laughs> shoot your questions. Chief, let me let me ask if you, if say you did find an ATV or some you know uh, all-terrain vehicle would. Would us authorizing this, this is on actually on, I think to, for the agenda for the 21st uh, and not on for tonight. But uh, if we did authorize that at, uh, at our next meeting, would it be a blanket authorization that if you saw uh, an ATV or something with, that you've been after, that you could just initiate a purchase for that? Or would you need to, or? Would you need to come back, or should we ask for you to come back and say, "Hey, I found this. Can I get it?" It's a it's a first come first serve basis. So the first person to claim it, first agency to claim it, and and you know they give you I believe like forty eight hours to come get it, and then so you know asking for authorization is uh, I don't think it's practical. Uh, I were you know I rather you know. It's not recommended. I'd rather go through and eliminate some categories that you have concern about. Yeah. But like I said, we've been doing it, been involved in the program for three years, and I'm not willy nilly just grabbing anything we can. Um, actually, trying to you know find items that are going to benefit us. So that's uh, 
that's in a nutshell. I think uh, waiting for authorization would you know, impede us from getting it. Because like I said, it's first come, first serve. Uh, there was items, there's been ATVs on there that we weren't able to, you know, we weren't able to get. It would, you know, by the time you saw it, fill out the paperwork um, or submit it online, it's, it's already taken. Um, because like I said, they're up there, it's uploaded daily. Yeah. If you're not checking it daily and an officer, you know, has scheduled days off, he comes on and, and sees it and he shoots the email saying the uh, submission that he requesting it, then he gets, a, you know, it's already been, it's already been accounted for. Okay. Those, those items go fast that, you know, that items that everybody can benefit from. Right. Does anybody have questions of the chief for on this particular issue? As I said, it's going to be on the agenda for the, uh, the 20 meeting on the 21st. Yes, yes Fern. Mayor. Uh, this is Fern. Uh, Chief, uh, would it be possible to have, uh, I guess, a listing of the equipment that you're interested in uh, and just share that with the committee so at least we have uh, an idea of what you're looking for? Yeah, I can I, share I that. I, I can go through the categories of, you know, like, like, like they explained to me, the categories or categories. They don't go into detail exactly what fits in that category, but you get a general idea. I think the very first one's like a helicopter or something. Obviously, I have no interest in that. I have no interest in an armored vehicle. Even, <laughs> even, I mean, even there could be use for it. I'm not denying that, but I'm looking for something in my direction to Detective Alpafana was, I want something that we can use daily, if not weekly, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm not looking for something monthly or yearly or every three years or every five years, you know, 100 years of flood or something like that. So yeah, I, I can break down that list and, and shoot you an email, the whole committee saying, you know, these are the categories I'm, I'm looking. Some overlap, you'll see there's unmanned um, aircraft and there's drones. So I would, the, the recommendation is not eliminate one or the other to include both because a drone could be in either category. Yeah. Again, just from a budget standpoint, as uh, we acquire these, if we're doing the maintenance on and we're covering the maintenance costs. Uh, Absolutely. And like point. I said, I keep that in mind of what my direction is to acquire the items, uh, because I, I, I want the maintenance costs not to be more than, than the use of it. Okay. Thank you. Just, just double checking. You said that there's no tax output beyond going to get it and uh, and then the maintenance after the fact? Correct. We're responsible to retrieve it and to maintain it. Thank you. Anything else, Chief? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have a whole, have a whole list. Go for it. <laughs> um, I, I've scheduled a meeting. Uh, if you recall, I can't remember if it was the last meeting or meeting before. I think it was last meeting. Uh, Mr. Leo from RLS had requested about no parking on Enterprise Drive. Um, I, uh, I, I was able to uh, schedule a meeting with a representative of Misfits, RLS, Township Engineer, and myself are going to meet on Thursday, discuss what the issue is, and discuss what the ramifications are if we do uh, make any particular area no parking. Uh, we might be able to resolve the issue without making no parking, trying to figure out whose trailers they are, what they're there for, and so that's that's the real, uh, you know, the real uh, goal of the meeting is to find out what's causing the issue, and you know, to see if that can be be uh, re re resolved before we start making new parking areas. Uh, we might have to do both, you know, uh, because there's other un untended consequences with misfits and a resident on Perkins Lane, as you know, Mr. Mayor, and um, so we if something is working and, and or we're going to change something to make it worse for that individual you know we want to have all the intended consequences try to figure it out before we pull the trigger on something so that scheduled for thursday i believe at 10 30. good um, excellent all right covid cases are on the rise as you know throughout the country but also in delanco uh, we had two near misses fortunately the notification system worked with the um, central dispatch uh, last week, two different calls for service officers were uh, dispatched to a residence where there was a positive case, but unfortunately,
they were advised prior to uh, entering the residence that uh, there was a positive case. So um, I'm giving the officers latitude um, in terms of coming in contact. Uh, we get an exposure and then uh, it could run throughout the police department. We've been very fortunate this time. And I think we're just on the cusp of getting some vaccines. So I'm looking forward to that. The only concern, Mr. Mayor, have you received any information about distribution uh, with the vaccine? No, I, I haven't either. I'm kind Not of surprised. No. Uh, I, I received an email today that there was a conference call, um, I, I believe on Tuesday last week about it. But like I said, I received the email today about it. So, so I missed the conference call. So I don't know what direction or what anticipation they're gonna be having for first responders. But uh, hopefully, you know, before the end of year, we'll start seeing some vaccinations uh, distributed. Um, I just want to uh, ensure, uh, uh, Ms. Lohr, that uh, we did the uh, training at the courtroom and we're gonna have another one scheduled for December 22nd. We'll follow the same procedure. We sanitize before and after and also making all visitors who are attending that training sign the, uh, the vendor book, uh, verifying that they uh, you know, answer no to all those questions. Um, uh, the construction, particularly the uh, Vine Street fence, uh, spoke with Mr. Thor, uh, Thor Construction, Doug of Thor Construction. Uh, Mr. Schwab had informed me that he was uh, has other jobs in Delanco. Uh, speaking with him, last time I spoke with him, he confirmed that. He's trying to uh, get all the jobs done within that one week. So he's trying to schedule everything. I believe uh, Mr. Fox has some uh, jobs for him to do. And so he's going to attempt to schedule it so it's done all at the same time and he's not coming in and out of town. Um, that's the update on that. He, he didn't give me a, an exact time. Uh, I think he's waiting to correspond with Mr. Fox. So I don't know if uh, Harry, have, have you heard from him a reference to West Avenue? I have, Chief. Um, he is looking at the, towards the end of this month. If not, if not then, it'll be early January, the first couple weeks of January. Okay. Um, the, uh, the Department of uh, Environmental Protection, uh, the mayor had discovered a, uh, a program where they loan a camera. I spoke with the uh, representative of the camera company and uh, he gave me some uh, pointers and um, he indicated that a tree can be used to mount this camera. It's not recommended. Um, they, they prefer utility poles, but I explained the situation where we're looking. So he is really, really helpful. He, uh, he said, send me some um, pictures, which, you know, I shot him some Google uh, map shots, Google Earth shots, and then I'm going to go out in the field, take some pictures. And he can say, recommend where's the best place to put it. If they don't see it, you know, an area, he would recommend putting up a pole. So I'll let them uh, direct me, but they did give me a little, you know, it's a cube, it's 12 by 12, 20 pounds. Uh, you know, they, for safety purposes, they recommend a, um, you know, a, um, a truck or, um, or they don't recommend ladders, but they said, you know, you got to do what you got to do if you can't get down there. Because that area is like a cliff. So it's a pretty good steep uh, drive down there. So I don't think we can, we can get a bucket truck down there or anything. You're but, talking about uh, the Hawk Island for yes. Tell, tell me what it's for, for. Yeah, it's for um, illegal dumping. So we're uh, trying to capture the the uh, the massive littering that's occurring there at the beach area. Um, I mean, there's other areas in Hawk Island that's being you know litter, but I think that's their highest volume. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Mayor? That would be the highest volume. But highest volume of littering is that beach area. Probably. And, uh, area, and it looks like we're moving forward with. The, the one uh, requirement where it needs to be public land. So it looks like on the agenda tonight where we're, we're gonna meet that requirement. So th there are just some areas and, uh, and I'll, I'll report back to you. It is a, it's not a constant video. Uh, what I understand it's every few seconds it takes a still shot. And then, it, you know, it's like, you know, the old 1920 movies where you just hold the still shots together. So um, I'll get more information. I'll take some pictures and get it to them 
and they can uh, let us know where the best place to mount it for that area, if if it's feasible or not. It does have a 100 uh, uh, A resident of Delanco that works for DEP in a different office had heard about it and sent me an email, uh, give, you know, some very preliminary information. I sent that on to the chief, um, but it's a competitive program. I think they've got something like a dozen of these cameras that the DEP has uh, gotten a grant to to uh, buy them, rent them or whatever for I think a 10 month period. Um, but anyway, it's a competitive program uh, statewide. And so I was just trying to, with the chief to get a jump on it and uh, get as much information as quickly as possible. It does have a December 31st application deadline, which uh, we're, as, as the chief said, we're trying to get that paperwork to uh, further evaluate it and uh, see if this really does uh, look like it's going to work for us. But thank you. Yeah, even if this area doesn't work, Mr. Mayor, we could put maybe a list of areas that, you know, you know, that we would try to utilize that camera. Yeah. Um, last item, I had talked to uh, Ms. Lohr about this I, in, in passing, and I just want to bring up to the committee's attention something you may not have thought about. With the Dolan construction, uh, there's two warehouses around the municipal building. I, I believe that's Dolan, correct? Yes. Is that Dolan? Okay. Yes. The, uh, the, you know, was the concern was brought up about, you know, future employees of, of those warehouses cutting through the municipal complex. So, um, you know, some thoughts in the future of putting a fence along the, the back perimeter of the municipal building to prevent uh, any, any persons from cutting through the public works or cutting through the you know, administration side driveway or a parking lot, same thing with the police side. So um, if there's a barrier there, you know, to make them, force them to go down Cooperstown Road a little further. So that's just something I want to bring to your attention. Maybe, you know, we can think about in the future. Um, I've been for that? the uh, building security and vehicle security. Correct. It, like I said, I'd, they're probably going to have a lot of, seems a lot of um, employees from these industries are, are utilizing the train. And so, uh, you know, I know we're addressing the sidewalk issue. I just don't want them to use the municipal complex as a, a shortcut. All right. Uh, so that's all I have. All right, thank you, Chief. No, no problem. Uh, Mr. Fox, are you back with us? Okay, I, I think so. Can you hear me? <laughs> Go for it. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, the uh, I, as, as the Chief was just uh, talking about uh, the Dolan site next door, um, we did have a pre-construction meeting with them, um, with the developer, um, to review his his procedures and how he's going to proceed. Um, we also discussed um, addressing our stormwater basin at Town Hall. Uh, he is going to address that, um, trying to work it out that we can get him to do actually do the work, um, which would be a tremendous help to, to the to the township. Yeah, just Harry um, explain. I think you talked about having a pipe connect our basin to their basin right next to it, so our basin will drain into their basin. Correct. Correct. It would be a, a small pipe. So our basin would fill up during a rainstorm, but it would let out water slowly into one of their inlets. Um, so our basin would drain dry in a matter of hours. Uh, and, and they, they agreed to, um, when we get to it, I have to work at the design with their engineer. Um, and then we'll, we'll need a, uh, a little drainage easement um, for our pipe. And, and, and that'll solve our problem with our basin. Um, they are, um, they don't have their approvals yet from planning board, I believe, Kitty. Um, they have conditional approval and they do not have sewer approval as of yet. Uh, they have not even submitted to the sewage authority, um, but they are in the process of doing that. So the only work they can really do now is their earth work. They can, they can move earth around. Other than that, they really can't do any more improvements until they have all their approvals. Um, they did request us to do their bond estimate uh, and escrow estimate uh, ahead of time, so they're ready to roll when when they when they get all their approvals. So we are working on that, um, and we will be submitting that to you um, for, for approval, and then they'll be posting their bond and, and escrow account. Okay, so Harry, they do have approval from the Joint Land Use Board. Um, 
They received that in August. And at this point, they have been submitting plans to Hugh Doherty and Michelle Taylor for their review. And I think they're pretty close to having that finalized. So we should have signed plans shortly. Okay, great. Thank you, Kate. Sure. Um, the uh, 2020 uh, road program, the contractor is starting uh, the end of this week, Thursday or Friday on the concrete work. Um, they're going to continue on with that uh, for the next couple of weeks. Uh, they're going to be doing concrete work on, they're going to be in the one driveway on Fenimore and the curb and handicap ramps and, and, and other concrete work on Lilac. Um, if they, if they, if they've done that, the weather is still good or good enough for our concrete work, they'll move over to uh, Spruce Street uh, and, and do that concrete work. So they're just going to start end of this week and continue until weather is not uh, favorable for, for the concrete work. Harry, there, there was, a, I think about a month or so ago, there was a, a resident that uh, had circulate, circulated some email. That's the one in Fenimore. Yep. So that's that's the driveway apron that's going to be repaired? On, on Thursday, Friday this week, yes. All right, very good. All right. Um, the uh, Poplar, Poplar and Mancocus uh, drainage outfall, um, we, that's, that's where we're, we're putting a flat valve, a check valve in um, to, to help the drainage situation. There's also an inlet there that was failing. Um, that inlet has been replaced. Um, we have to order the check valve and there's about a seven week lead time on that. Uh, but we're all set with it, with the, uh, with the inlet. Um, and once you put the check valve in, that will stop the tides from going up the drainage system. The drainage system goes all the way from Rinko to Poplar, all the way up to Hickory Street. Uh, um, it'll stop that tide from, from coming in, into that pipe. Uh, and with that, we have um, on the schedule to do videoing uh, and some small cleaning of that pipe system from Hickory down to, to Poplar uh, and Rancocas. But we don't want to do that until we put the, the valve in. Um, otherwise, the pipe will be full of high tide. It limits how much we can actually video. So once the, 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 the check valve is in, then we can go into the video of the pipe and, and see what's going on with that system. Um, as I uh, mentioned uh, with, the, with the chief, I spoke with Thor uh, Construction, um, Doug Thorman, and he is uh, figuring towards the end of this month or early January to install the parking lot over at West Avenue Fields on Memorial. Um, when he does that, he's also going to work on the fence for the chief. And there's another project that he's given some prices on that it, that if he's uh, acceptable prices, then he's going to be working on that. That's the uh, the uh, Gateway Park uh, for the for the rec. Um, so he's trying to do all those at, at one shot. He's also giving us a proposal. And I've already talked to him and, and, and two other contractors, and it sounds like he's going to be the lowest person on that to do the work on um, the end of uh, at, at Fenimore. Uh, Robin's, Robin Lane. Robin's yeah. Lane. Yeah, Robin's Lane. Um, to, and, I, and I went over that with Mr. Fenimore. Um, we're going to be cleaning out that drainage ditch and building a berm next next to our drainage ditch between our, on our property between our between the ditch and the adjoining property so if he gets that project he'll be doing all those at once okay on the uh, on the vine street gate at uh, into hawk island uh, does the public works mr fenimore have to do anything with there's an there's an embankment there on either side does that any of that have to be modified to where you need to put the gate or is that being considered no, that's it's being TV. considered. He, he's taking, um, he's putting the gate and then he's going to run the fence off the gate into the berm. Good. It's, right. it's going to be about five feet away from the existing gate. And then he's going to tie in fence. I think you said it's approximately six foot because um, it's on an angle, angling out into the berm. All right. Um. The other uh, thing, I uh, the Zubrook Seawall, the Zubrook Mansion Seawall. Um, as I mentioned before, I met with the Assistant Commissioner 
uh, out at the site and he indicated that we can put the seawall back to its original location. Uh, I've been in contact with him several times back and forth. He did actually speak with his, his staff today um, and indicate the situation and they're all in agreement that we can put the, the seawall back in the original location. Um, what we need to do next is do a, a, he said to submit them a conceptual plan uh, that shows the location and what, we'll, what basically what we want to put in. And so we're all on the same page and they can authorize that. And then we can move on whenever the township is ready for a formal application. Um, I can uh, do that plan. We have a lot of base plans already. So for, for under $800, I can put together a conceptual plan that we can submit to, to, to DEP uh, at this point if, if authorized. How the conceptual plan is that that uh, uh, um, uh, bulkheaded or, or you know the gabion mix that you that we have up at uh, Edgewood and, and Oakford and so forth or something different? It, it, I, I, I would I would suggest we do the same thing as we did at the street ends, mm -hmm. um, and that can be revised. Uh, the main thing is showing a a solid structure at the old bulkhead line. Right. Oops. What that structure is made of, how it's made, okay. can all be ironed out on the engineering right, end of it. Yeah, us, I think we actually have that plan that uh, Dave put together yep. 10 years ago. I have it sitting in my desk drawer. Yeah. I assume you still have that, right? I do, yes. Okay. All right. As long as it gets a little uh, wiggle. There. Authorize them to proceed ASAP. Yeah. Is everybody uh, okay with that, with uh, Mr. Fox's proposal for, for uh, yeah. preliminary? Um, plan that's basically out of the drawer for DEP in the next step. Yes, yes. I am. Yes. Do we need strike, a roll call? strike while the iron's hot. You can do a resolution. Yeah. You can Let's do keep a motion. On this. You can do a motion. Uh, a motion, please, on uh, Mr. Fox's proposal for a preliminary uh, seawall plan for the Zerber Park. I move. So move. And in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Who was the second? I'm sorry. Brown. JB. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any I'll other get to that and get that up to them. Thank you. Uh, Great. Thank you. Uh, the, the, the last item I have is uh, I'm, I'm I think I sent an email to everyone, but I'm not sure. We we did receive the 2021 DOT local aid grant um, for this round. Uh, we received $240,000, uh, which is the same amount we received last year. Um, we need to, at this point, um, or sometime in the near future, uh, decide on what roads you want to do. Um, what we do when we do these grants is we, we always apply for more money than we know they're going to give us. Um, and we, we put in more roads. So then what we do is we, we, we do as much what we can do with whatever money they give us. Um, we had listed to do in this grant application, um, Second Street from Lilac to the end uh, on the northern side, um, River's Edge Drive to, to finish that, that up from uh, Fenimore to Second Street, uh, Maple Avenue, the last, the block between Burlington Avenue and Third Street which is an extension of, we did the other blocks probably six, seven years ago. Um, right. So this would extend that. Uh, and then also Cedar Street from Delaware Avenue to Third Street. So we, we can do any one of those projects or any combination of those. We can't do anything else because that all those streets are what we applied for. Um, we obviously don't have enough money to do all the streets uh, so I, at this point, I would recommend with the money we have, we can do Second Street and uh, River's Edge. Um, if once we get the design down and, and, and get a good estimate, if we have more money or we can even make it an alternate, we can add on. A, 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 we, we probably won't have enough to do all of Cedar Street, but we could do maybe one block of Cedar Street and maybe we could do Maple, um, one or the other. But... I would recommend doing second and River's Edge as the, the base bid and, and then an alternative of whatever else we can use to use up the money. 
Any questions on that? Harry, I see. Yeah, yeah, John I have a question, Harry. Um, would you talk to John Fenimore about that to see what he feels would be the best streets to do, other than Second? And because he really has a clear picture of what's going I, on. I, I did uh, when we did the grant application, and there are the streets that, especially Second Street, is what he wanted to have done. Um, and I also sent him an email um, along with Richard for their input to, to, on, on the streets. And, and I know John wants Second Street done. Uh, okay. I, I would like to see that piece of maple be done since uh, I've been hearing about it for years by somebody uh, on that street. I won't mention it. Too. He does a lot of walking in town. Uh, we certainly can, uh, like, like I said, I, um, it, it would make sense to make that an alternate. And yeah, and if we have enough funds, great. If not, then, then you know, we, we, we don't. But um, unless you want to not do River's Edge and do Maple and Cedar and, and Second. Well, Maple's only the one block. Yeah. Correct. So. Yeah, now with, with Maple, um, so you know, the other two blocks that we did years ago included um, curb and, and aprons. Um, right. And the main reason for that is because of the drainage. That road was really flat. If you, if you recall back then, we had to put in some swales and, 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 and um, change the, the grades considerably. This section doesn't need any of that. It has plenty of fall, so it would just be the paving on this and possibly some curb here and there. So it wouldn't be a whole, it wouldn't look like the other two blocks, unless, of course, you want us to do that. But typically, we only do the concrete work if we need to for drainage issues. Well, let's see what, what we get, and uh, we'll take a look at it when we get the money. Okay, so, so we'll start off on the... Yeah, I, I, I think one of the things that Harry's asking, it, I don't know if it makes a difference, Harry, in your proposal, but well, the next thing, the next step is the professional services proposal, so we can authorize them so we can start working on it so we get out of bids in the spring. Uh, so, Harry, if it doesn't make any difference, you could put together that proposal sub, subject to which road it would be, which roads it would be, and then we could at least authorize you to get started put that on the agenda for the 21st and get started and then uh you know once he has yes. better numbers you can make a decision probably at your january meeting for sure which ones to uh actually go out to bids for does that make sense yes. yeah okay great and, and that's all i have great okay you, you want to mention the your status of the sidewalk uh study Oh yeah, um, yeah. We have the uh, preliminary plan is is basically done. So it's just about done. So I can meet. I don't know if you want to set up a subcommittee or you want me to just meet with Richard and, and John or and whomever um, to go over the. Yeah, we should look at it first, and then we'll see whether we think we're in a position to take that next step. Yeah, I'd like to see how far you're going. You've gone so far. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're, then we report. We can report on the twenty first. John, I can report what we've seen and we can determine if we want to set up a subcommittee or how you want to handle uh, the next phases. I just like to see what the study looks like before we uh, have to get a whole bunch of people involved sitting around a table or sitting around Perfect. a computer. <laughs> Perfect. And, right. and that's all I have. Thanks. Thanks, Harry. Uh, let's see. Mr. Fenimore, are you still out there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Good. Okay. Tonight? okay, we've uh, so far this year, uh, we picked up um, 1,480 cubic yards of leaves. We're, uh, we've done quite well. We've been staying out even in bad weather. Uh, we've been working overtime. Um, generally in, in um, November, uh, there's three days that we have off that we lose and we actually have been keeping up with the leaves, and the uh, leaves have kind of fell all at once. So 
Uh, we slowed down several times. We're getting back on schedule. We're on our third pass, and we'll probably make uh, probably at least five passes through the town uh, before the end of the year. And I plan uh, the week of Christmas to be out on a chipper and cleaning up any piles of brush that is left so the town's nice and clean before Christmas. Um, our new dump truck finally came in. Um, the body was the wrong color, so I sent it back, and uh, they repainted the back, and we finally got it, and uh, um, it's pretty nice. And uh, um, we'll have three trucks now with salt spreaders on them, so uh, we should be doing good in that category. Um, one of our biggest problems that we've been having uh, with all this bad weather, the compost site has been uh, terrible. But um, we've been, you know, keeping up on it, and uh, just unfortunately nobody has been stuck uh, that we had any problems with getting him out or anything like that. Usually it gets pretty bad, but uh, uh, we've done pretty good on that this year. So... Um, uh, I guess that's about it. That's all I have. Now, the only thing with the sidewalks in front of Town Hall and the Public Works garage, um, I don't know if Harry, uh, is the sidewalks going to be four foot wide? Do you know? Well, at this point, we're, we're not doing those sidewalks. We're doing the sidewalks over be between Hickory and Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, but... but well, I mean, in the future, I just want you guys to realize that I guess we'll have to maintain these sidewalks. And since the snow will be coming off of the county road, uh, and sometimes the amount of snow that uh, will go on to these sidewalks, there, there might be a problem. I don't know how. Um, there, there's been some several snows where they've been really bad. <laughs> And as far as trying to clear the sidewalk, so I, I don't know, but I just want to put that in the back of everybody's mind, um, you know, when the time comes and we'll try to figure that out. Yeah, we'll see, uh, John, you'll be part of the preliminary meeting with Harry and his in the master plan. And part of that, I want to see that you've thought about exactly where you're going to locate them in relationship to the road, whether it's going to be right up against the road. And John points out means the snow will be plowed right onto the sidewalk or whether there's gonna be any space between the sidewalk and the road. So it's an interesting question, but we'll do that, John, when we meet with Eric. Yeah, that's, that's, that's you know, thought, that's gonna be a concern, but uh, you know, yeah. we'll have to deal with it when we have to deal with it. But I just wanna right. let you know. Okay. John, you were- And that's all. You were, you were saying you were concerned about when the county snowplow comes by and throws the snow from no it's a county road and when we when we he plow, plows it we plow the county yeah. road we plow the road we plow the road okay. so uh you know it's <laughs> it gets a lot of snow there yeah. believe me no i was just wondering it gets you know, a lot of snow when you come by my place it, it throws the snow on my sidewalk and then i have to clear it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He knows what it's like. Well, we'll try not to let that happen. That's all. All right. All right. <laughs> just, just pointing that out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I don't think that happened last year, did it? No. 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 no that's and I don't think it happened the, the year before. I think two times. All right. And by the way, John, make sure Aaron gets the detail on the dump truck to let the GIF know we have it. And yes. I'm sure we have an invoice to process, so I have to mark that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Well done, John. Thanks for for everyone being safe. It's uh, it's dangerous out there with all the. What yeah, it's uh, you know we every day I got to keep telling the guys you got to be safe, got to be safe, wear your mask, and and everybody we have a log now that we've been doing and uh, uh, knock on wood, knock on wood. I don't want to say nothing. I don't want to jinx nobody. You mentioned so. you were going to come through picking up brush. Is that good? going to be a, a public advertised or are you just go no. pick up his no well just let him clean up what he can clean up don't don't tell people for sure yeah yeah okay we've had a lot Nothing of people new out, just the people who accidentally put right out, forgot they we've, weren't supposed to we've uh, i've sent a lot of notices because the you know the residents don't really realize when when you're coming down with the uh, leaf picker 
that the leaves get into these, you know, the brush and whatnot, and then you have to go around it, and it just it makes an obstacle. And so I've sent a lot of letters out, you know, stating, but uh, I I can't get them all. And and uh, so every year I, I we work hard to make sure that the leaves are up, and then get the brush up so the town looks good right. for Christmas. Well done. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Lord, administration. Nothing for this section. I will have uh, something for the COVID section, correspondence, and one item for executive session. All right. I Thank think you. We got everything covered there. Anybody at Township Committee have something that's uh, timely and needs to be put out in the, before the next meeting? Uh, next meeting, we'll have the regular Township Committee commentary or comments. But is there anything that needs to get uh, announced uh, tonight? Uh, to cover the next uh, two weeks. Um, I have something. I did receive an email from Joe Brickley indicating that they did receive bids for 507 Burlington Avenue, and he's going to let oh. us know when they decide to pick the bid and uh, have that building demolished. Uh, I also wanted to let you know that um, Santa was welcome to delay go on Friday night or Saturday night. So there will be a video out tonight. Actually, it was seven o'clock tonight to um, the residents as well as the school children. Uh, Santa has a couple of messages for the children. And um, he will be coming around town on the 19th. So I wanted to let everybody know that because I don't think we meet again until the 21st. Correct. You can uh, sit on, you can stand on your porch or in your um, yard, but uh, they will not be handing anything out. So um, he's going to be happy to be here. And that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Kate. Uh, consent agenda items. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Uh, does anybody on committee have a question or comment or wishes to have a particular item pulled out for separate consideration? 136 has the amount is um, $32,105. So there's an error and there's a typographical error there as to the fourth quarter tax refund. Yeah, we'll get that fixed. Um, 130, let me find 136. Nice. Oh, it's got an extra. Got an extra digit in there. Digit, yeah. So three, two. Okay, I will fix that based on the email I received from the tax collection department. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kate. You're welcome. The typo in our favor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the comma's in the proper place. I think there's an extra file. Yeah, it's an extra digit in the extension. Yeah. yeah. Right it's up. not. It's not in our favor. It's actually <laughs> we're refunding it. Right. So that would not be in our favor. That would be our loss. Right. Well, somebody double paid. That's why we're refunding. Hey, that's yeah. a good catch. All right. Ordinance uh, 2020-15 authorizing acquisition of property at block 2300 lot one, one Hawk Island within the township of Delanco. This is first reading by title only and set public hearing date for December 21st, 2020 at 7 p.m. Uh, resolution 2020-135, resolution authorizing application for a grant from Community Development Fund. We've talked about that. Uh, resolution-136, the refund of tax overpayment, which Mrs. Uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick pointed out the error. Uh, resolution 137, authorizing lease purchase of copy or printer under state contract. Resolution 138, appointing reappointing municipal tax collector. Resolution 139, resolution to extend computer slash networking services and support contract with FITS Incorp uh, in corporate FITS Incorporation DBA Fitzgerald and Company three year option extension. Payment of bills account current fund uh, nine hundred twelve thousand nine hundred thirty seven dollars seventy six cents. Payroll two hundred twenty thousand four hundred sixty three dollars forty two cents. Excuse me, dog fund. $200, escrow trust, $12,888.00, housing trust, $31.25, municipal open space, $3,269.41. The approval of minutes on October 5th, uh, 2020. 
Uh, approval of consent agenda, please. A motion. And Mayor, for the record, on that resolution 3136, it, the correct amount is $3,105.52. So the two does not belong there. That will be corrected. Um, I'll make the motion. To second. The consent. second, please. I'll second. Christine. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Brown with the motion, second by Ms. Holland. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Olatz? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes, thank you. Uh, meetings open to the public now for comments and questions. This is session two. If you have a question or comment, please state your name. The floor is yours. Uh, the public is reminded to, if they wish to make a uh, comment or have a question, please unmute or type your comment or question into the chat function. Hi, I have a question. This is uh, Steve McLaughlin again, 740 Rancopas Avenue. Um, I just have a question about the ordinance 2020-15 um, about uh, uh, acquiring a, a, a block 2300, lot one at Hawk Island. Um, maybe, I'm, I'm just what, like, this is an authorization to acquire the property. How much is it going to cost? That is my question. Maybe I'm just missing something. Actually, this is a uh, acquisition for a, uh, it's the estate of the deceased owner. And uh, before I get too far out in the limb, maybe Mr. Heinhold uh, should, should jump in here. But uh, um, this was actually initiated by Chief DeSanto uh, last summer. Uh, we're trying to find some way to enforce the dumping out there. And mm -hmm. Chief managed to track down the uh, surviving family member and uh, that's what kind of opened up uh, uh, right. this process. So, right, yeah, I, I've been following the, you know, following it month by month, but I'm just curious, but what is the, what will we, how much will you be paying this person for the, for the land? Donation. No, no, donation. donation. Right. So the, the property owner down in Florida had no idea of the history of this. Uh, he's um, in his uh, 70s, had no idea that the family owned this piece of property doesn't really want to be bothered mm -hmm. or, or concerned with it. And um, if you look at the assessment value, it's uh, about a thousand dollars an acre. Mm -hmm. um, and how many acres is it? Uh, about 14, 12, 12, 12, 15. 12. Um, is there a map somewhere that I can, I'm, 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 is, is, yeah, is there a map somewhere that I can see the blocks on Hawk Island? The tax maps are on the tax maps. municipal website under the tax office, and they're mm -hmm. located there. It's block 2300, so it's page 23. Mm -hmm. And you can also search that on the DEP website. Uh, you get some good Google Earth, and, and some of the overlays there actually show you the, the actual uh, lot boundaries. Gotcha. Uh, and I just have one more question about that, which is, um, it seems to me that this introduces a uh, new liability to the township, right? If something happens on that specific land, is that a concern at all? That, that I know that there, you have other, there are plans for a possible park or other things happening back there. My question is, is there, is there a risk of a liability concern from your perspective? You already yes. own several of the lots. So mm -hmm. owning this one doesn't add significantly and it doesn't change our, our joint insurance fund assessment. That's that's one of the questions. They will cover it. We, we are covered under our GIF. We do let them know what properties we own. And there are also uh, substantial immunities afforded to municipalities and public entities under the law, under the what's called the New Jersey Tort Claims Act. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be okay. the third tract of land that the, the township would have uh, ownership of and that would put us up around 38 acres total of the 120 acres on Hawk Island that the, the mm -hmm. township has uh, ownership of. So yeah. Okay. Well, I'm. I. I, I mean, I I I voiced my, com my my opinion on this before. I really would like to see as much of Hawk Island stay the way it is uh, as possible moving forward. So I mean. The, the idea of putting in parking lots and um, 
and you know, paving footpaths and attracting more traffic, foot traffic, and potentially boat traffic uh, back there is uh, is a real concern to me. And so I'm, I'm a little skeptical of uh, the town acquiring the, these blocks. And and so we'll see we'll see where things go from here. But well, presently um, it's a bit of the wild west out there. Is uh, the chief is uh, knows and has tried to uh, uh, get a handle on um, it's. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean that I grew up in Delanco, and I think that there's something really special about Hawk Island, the fact that it is untouched and it's one of these last, you know, untouched kind of natural wild places uh, in this area. And I've seen a lot of trees come down, a lot of wild, you know, a lot of forest basically come down in Delanco, and so this is our last really big chunk of forest, and I, I want to do whatever I can to, to you know, keep it there. No, appreciate. So, so anyway, just. Uh, Getting that out there. Thank you for thank you. Uh, listening to my comment. Anyone else? Any other public comment, please? I'm just I'm just curious, Chief. Uh, does Amico Island and Del Ran have the same? Who's speaking? Oh, Stephen Lore, 2800 Colgate Avenue. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chief. Does Amico Island and Del Ran have the same problems with boaters? And trash and people going in, you know, onto the island as Hawk Island does. Do you know? No, I don't know the answer to that question. I can reach out to the county parks. And... No, I, I'm 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 only thinking... asking that because I. Go ahead, Steve. No, I was going to say I'm thinking that I would think Amico Island probably doesn't have the same problems that Hawk Island does on this on the fact that you have a park and you have a lot of foot traffic. You know, and people go there to fish, people take their families, they go there to picnic, they go there to walk their dog, they go there to hike. Um, I'm just curious if they have the same problems that Hawk Island does with the boaters and the people that come down and basically use it as their own personal uh, recreational space and they leave behind not a couple pieces of trash but dumpsters worth uh, you know full trash so I, i'd just be curious if if hamaco island has the same issues as hulk island i steven i wouldn't think so because uh because it's under the county park system and there's a ranger that actually patrols it uh and it's closed <laughs> and it's closed at, at all night and um uh, i i mean i've been there several times and i've never i've never seen uh, any trash or debris around the waterfront area. So I wouldn't think it's the same. Um, but Chief, maybe you could check on that. Yeah, I can ask the county. Uh, keep in mind, you know, from what I understand, I haven't personally seen it, but a lot of the boat traffic is coming from Pennsylvania. So, uh, right. you know, Hawk Island is the first destination they come to. Right. I'm, uh, I'm too, that, you know, like you pointed out, Mr. Lohr, there's not a lot of activity and a lot of people present. So there's the ability to go and detect it for long periods of time. Yeah, that, that's my, and uh, thank you, Chief. And, and, and Committee Woman Fitzpatrick, that's my point, is that to resolve a lot of the problems out at Hawk Island, it might be in the interests of the township to control as much land out there as possible and perhaps maybe develop it into an open and monitored recreational space. Is the benefit up at the West Avenue trails is that since that was open to the public and, and uh, as a joint use facility with the uh, public works compost area, there's kind of a, a steady stream of uh, either public works employees or residents enjoying the trails up there. And it probably has precluded a lot of, uh, uh, as the chief says, uh, undesirable activity going on undetected for a long time. So there's uh, Definite pluses to you know having uh, a natural area, but allowing the public to get in there, and it's it's kind of a passive enforcement by by doing that. I, I want to throw out one thing, which is that I'm I'm not sure that the boat traffic would stop if Hawk Island became a park, because a lot of these boats are pulling up below the low tide line, and so they're covered, right? Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Of course, they're actually going up on Hawk Island, but. Even if it were a park and Hawk Island were all public land, I think you might still get boats pulling up in the oh, sand. They, they can beach all they want, but leaving it as, as a toilet 
as, as what we've seen out there. Uh, and the literally, but, but, Laura said, but no, but, but if you if you step back and take the bigger picture, to me, I, I, I mean, big parts of Hawk Island are you know really wild, really overgrown, and overgrown in a way that you don't see back at Amico Island, um, which I I love to see. It's a it's a real it's a you know a little island of biodiversity right here in Delico. Okay. Um, All right. And so I'm worried that with the combination of I think putting a park back there will draw more foot traffic first of all, and then potentially draw more boat traffic, all of which is going to cause you know, further erosion, uh, further threaten the the deer and the other wildlife that live back there. Right. Um, I, I would rather, I would really so much rather see this town leave Hawk Island alone and really kind of leave it, clean up the garbage. But but, you know, we're going to take a very measured uh, uh, measured uh, process in this. So uh, mm -hmm. we've had a big okay. change in the status of Hawk Island in the last year with these the two property acquisitions, and so we're we're going to be a uh, very cautious about how we proceed, but uh, right now we just want to get uh, get some kind of control and management of uh, uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, the spoiling of that land. So appreciate your comments. Thank you. Any other public comment, please? All right, hearing none. Well, uh, we actually do, Mayor, in the chat. What do we got? Alyssa De La Pena. Uh, I agree with you, Steve McLaughlin. Thank you for voicing your concerns on Hawk Island. Any other comments uh, from, from that format, Mrs. Lord? I only see the one from the chat format. The meeting is still open to the public. If anyone um, from the public wishes to unmute and speak or enter a comment into the chat um, before the mayor closes the meeting to the public. Thank you. Okay, going once, going twice, and this section, the public comment section is now closed to the public. Thank you. Good comments by all. Uh, correspondence, Mrs. Lohr, back to you. Yes, we do. Well, first, uh, we do have the letter from um, Mr. Um, Paye, chairman of the HPAB, on, the half, on behalf of the Delanco History Preservation Advisory Board. Um, he presented his thoughts, their thoughts on the request to change their name to the Delanco History Board. And um, I think everyone did get that in their email. If, if not, I think Erin does have it that he, she can actually put it up on the screen if you'd like to see that, if you didn't get a chance. And the letter does uh, go uh, further on to state the reasons to support the name change. Oh, more correspondence. We have, um, uh, Harry had mentioned earlier, received a letter from the NJDOT um, with the 2021 Municipal Aid Program Award to Delanco for $240,000. We, we received, and you did have copies in your packets, um, the, um, let's see, I have a it was the, uh, from Tom's, Stan, I can't pronounce his name, Stan Eukinas, um, regarding the uh, Route 130 Delaware River River Corridor strategic plan update that, um, and then everyone was emailed, uh, forwarded his responses to the mayor's um, many questions and concerns. So that's entered for um, correspondence, that Route 130 Corridor Municipal um, Questionnaire. We have a letter from um, I don't know why this is here. Oh, we have a letter, an email letter from Ed Murfin, um, writing to Township Committee, um, expressing his concerns about the future impacts of global warming and making recommendations for various um, uh, actions to be taken in 2021 or considered. Many of those actions um, are, are not within municipal jurisdiction, but I wanted to um, enter that as correspondence. We have um, a letter of resignation, submitted email uh, letter of resignation from Joan Hinkle resigning from the Delanco Sewage Authority, effective December 31st, 
2020. So there's that. And then um, that would create a vacancy for that unexpired term, um, January 1st. And then uh, we have two letters uh, uh, recommending, uh, asking for appointment uh, to that position that had an expired term, one from um, committee woman Fitzpatrick and one from uh, Bill Matalevich. And those letters are also included in your packet for the reappointments, but they are um, really, they aren't the um, term expirations, it's unexpired terms. So they would be entered as correspondence during this time. And that is the correspondence that I have. If the committee would like to take um, action on Mrs. Hinkle's letter of resignation, um, that to be effective December 31st, 2020, uh, the committee may do so. And it's, was, was Miss, Mrs. Hinkle's resignation, is there another appointment up this year? Or are there two seats? Well, yes. What will happen is that what, there is a term that's expiring. Uh -oh. There's a term that is expiring 131, 2021. And that's Mr. Jenkins. Okay. That's a regular expiration. And then Mrs. Hinkle's um, letter of resignation isn't a term expiration, it's a letter of resignation. So come January 1st, 2021, that is that will be vacant. So that can be filled either tonight to, to be effective January 1st. It can wait till reorganization. It doesn't, it doesn't have the same uh, timetable as the term expir as Mr. Jenkins term expiration of 131.21. I hope that explained that, John. Yeah, yeah. So would we, we would we uh, take care of that appointment in January, the Jenkins appointment? Um, well, that that is something you would normally do during reorganization, if you, okay. if you wish, because that term doesn't expire until 131 20, uh, 21. All right. Mrs. Hinkle's letter of resignation is effective January 1, 21. So okay. to have to have that fifth member on board for their January meeting, you might want to act on that prior to the end of the year. You don't have to. You can leave it vacant. You can act on it tonight. You can wait till the meeting on the 21st. You can wait till reorg. It, it is it is certainly the township committee's um, you know, at their pleasure, how they want to. But we do have two um, two uh, letters of interest in appointment for, to fill uh, Mrs. Hinkle's letter, uh, uh, unexpired term. And one from committee woman Fitzpatrick and one from Bill Matalavich. That's, uh, we'll, we'll work on the, uh, the the vacancies and and who goes where and what we have to work with. Uh, we'll do that at, on the meeting on the 21st, or at least get, get a framework. Right, we're going to talk a little bit about um, that in executive session tonight. Um, see if you have any questions, comments about what has been received, who I haven't heard from yet. Okay. Um, yeah. But the uh, letters of interest for appointments to fill the unexpired term is, is should be entered as co uh, correspondence okay. under the public session. Right. So, did, um, so you can, like I said, you don't have to accept the letter of resignation tonight. If you want to act on that on the 21st, you certainly can. Okay. That's, that's, and that's, we'll that's the correspondence. Yeah. That's the correspondence that I have. Thank right. you. Uh, Mr. Schwab, do we, uh, as far as the, the the letter from the Bridge Commission, Mr. Sanginikis on the uh, Route 130 plan endorsement, that um, how should we approach that? There's kind of a short. Yeah. Sure is. I, th I think that uh, what we said is you got the correspondence now. I think the governing body members should read the information that uh, was sent out and we should put on the agenda the discussion item on the 21st. More than likely, we will need the services of a planning planner, our planner to put that together. It's not necessarily something that can be done either by an individual member of the township committee or by the current staff. But the township committee members, my recommendation is read all that information so that you can determine who you think ought to be filling that information out and whether or not we need to pay for help or whether or not you want to try to do it some other way. 
So that's my recommendation, process-wise. So we need to decide that tonight. No, the only thing you need, I would, I would recommend that we put it on as a discussion item for the 21st. But it's due the 22nd. I don't think it's, I thought that he indicated there wasn't a specific due date. He said it would, uh, yeah, I thought it was um, 2021, I thought. The two page questionnaire, he wants to, that, that has to be replied to by the 22nd. No way that can be done, obviously. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would say we advise them that it can't be done. We just received it. Doesn't make any sense that somebody can ask for your vision for the rest of your lives in Delanco. Yeah, page uh, two, two days before. Page two on his letter. Uh, please complete return the questionnaire to EDRP. That's Mr. Senyanikis by December twenty second, twenty twenty. We will submit all the questionnaires from the twelve corridor communities collectively. It says, if you need more time, let me know. Right. Right. Uh, the questionnaire is just the first step in the process. So it does say, if you need more time to let him know. Yeah. Uh, so I thought in his, in his reply to you, uh, Mike, he also indicated that the time frame is yeah. kind of loose. Yeah. It, it just, it just, you know, we got this a few days ago and they've yeah. been sitting on, on this since last June. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, excuse me, Mayor. I have a question for Janice. Uh -huh. Go for it. I'm actually answering that. Oh, okay. Never That's mind. That's okay. I just can't type fast enough. <laughs> there you go, Kitty. That's actually a term expiration, Kitty. Well, do you want me to call uh, um, Mr. Stanley and I guess and say, hey, you know, we need something a date into January? Yes, exactly. All right. All right. I would ask for more time than January. Yeah. Well, right. that whole thing, the whole process, the uh, the two page of um, there's there's you have to appoint an ad hoc citizen committee. Uh, you have to have public hearings. You have to it's it's a it looks like a year or eighteen month process, but. Um, it's usually something that they present to us. It's not usually something we do. So it looks like they're putting it on the municipalities. But I would certainly ask for more time than that, maybe to at least June, so that we can really have time to work on it. Yeah, it's not something you do overnight. Well, no, that's 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 what I said in my my response a couple three days ago. So it just seemed uh, a little too short a notice. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, status of any other comments on the correspondence before we move on? All right, status of coronavirus disease, COVID-19. Um, everyone knows the numbers are going crazy. Uh, and I don't think we're gonna be, you know, there's all kinds of teases on the, on the vaccine. Um, the reports I was reading today is that those numbers or the, the quantities are probably the, these various states were being informed that they would get are now uh, only about one tenth of what uh, they were told a couple, three, four weeks ago. So um, we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, we're just going to have to more of the same. It's tough on everybody. It's tough on all kinds of things. We got to look out for each other. Uh, look out for our neighbors and our friends, and uh, uh, especially through the holidays, uh, you got to keep this thing from blowing up. Um, our numbers, uh, uh, as I as I put out on the county distribution that I got this morning, um, over 220 days. I think we had uh, 73 COVID positives in Delanco, and we've gotten 75 in the last 30 30 days. So obviously that's a reflection of uh, the more, more the testing that's a little more available than it was last spring. But uh, this is a very dangerous situation and we just have to hang on a little longer uh, and uh, be cautious and watch yourself. Um, I uh, got that 
that app that uh, the state put out on the uh, uh, that COVID COVID nineteen app that's on the uh, state website, and it uh, it gives you an alert if you've been in close proximity to a, a confirmed COVID positive, and then you can kind of take those actions to protect yourself and uh, whoever you may be coming in contact with. So. Um, that's a, a free app that's uh, on the Department of Health website. But, uh, uh, anyone have any other comments, questions uh, to add on that, uh, that topic right now? Uh, you, you just got a recent thing from the State Health Department on the vaccines. So you'll see that on your email. It's called Vax. There's a newsletter called Vax right. Matters that was just sent today. It's got a whole detail on how it's being distributed and resources and time frames. It's a more generalized kind of thing, but it's, it's a right. good summary. Uh, report on state and county relief funds, CARES Act. Is that uh, Mrs. Lohr, Mr. Schwab, or? We did get notified from the state that we uh, our submission um, of our costs has been approved. And so uh, Bev, who is the lead for this um, application, it will be working diligently to submit all of our costs and, um, you know, um, for the additional PPE and uh, other uh, uh, things that have been purchased. In addition, uh, um, that we weren't approved for under the FEMA grant. Is that the, the funding that was uh, the approved, approved for up to like $54,000? Yeah, we right. submitted 40 some thousand in expenses. Um, were, we, yeah, we, were we able to include the, uh, the new window in the uh, side meeting room? That is in there. That is in there. I would like to get that encumbered by the end of the year yeah. right. so that um, we meet that deadline. And I know Harry's been working diligently to find a contractor um, to do that. He's been working with the company to, that um, actually is the, the window vendor, which is the biggest part of the expense. We just have to uh, find a, a contractor that works with commercial buildings because we have metal studs and you know with the new header and everything um, that can, um, we can get under contract and at least get that money encumbered. I have a the the on. Year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else to add on that on the CARES Act? No, not on the CARES Act, unless Richard has anything additional. No, that covers it. Uh, executive orders update: uh, COVID policy procedures. Uh, Mrs. Lore on on the latest township uh, policy. Yeah, the the Fourth Amendment was sent out to all the employees. It puts in place the requirements of the newest executive order, uh, requiring that uh, employees and or anyone reporting to the building. Um, uh, have a temperature check and answer the questions regarding their health status and um, exposure status. And we've opted uh, to go with, rather than um, taking your temperature on site, um, you take your temperature at home, uh, you go over the questions and when you get to the municipal building, you actually sign a log or initial a log that you have a temperature which is under the CDC recommendation and have met the other criteria of the other three questions. And it seems to be working out very well. We did acquire some digital oral thermometers uh, for those employees that had indicated they did not have a thermometer so that there would be everyone to take their temperature at home. And uh, we have uh, distributed several of those. So it seems to be working very well. Well done, well done. Thank you. Uh, let's see, status of township committee meeting for the 21st, I guess we're doing it, right? All right. Yeah. Continue with the Zoom. Uh, yes, okay. yeah, I think we're gonna be Zooming that, for a yes. while. Okay. Uh, discussion items, let's uh, yeah, flip the order here. Uh, continued discussion, proposed ordinance amending township code chapter 29, governing to rename historic preservation advisory board to history board. Questions, comments from the committee on this item? We get all our answers there. Um, I, I'd just like to say that if everyone uh, read the ordinance, they would see that changing the name does not change the ordinance, just the name. And that it, it doesn't seem to me that it's 
such a big deal. So I think that we should mm -hmm. actually put it on tonight for first reading so that we can adopt it at the next meeting and not have it carry over into the new year. Any other comments from the committee on that? You okay to, to move forward on that as uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick suggests? Is, did she make a motion? I'd like to make the motion that this would be um, first reading tonight and um, public hearing scheduled for uh, the 21st. Okay, so if that will sign ordinance number 2020-16, uh, amending the code at chapter 29 govern governing to rename historic preservation advisory board to history board. First reading by title only and set public hearing for December 21st, 2020, seven o'clock PM. Is that a motion by you, um, Committee Woman Fitzpatrick? Yes, yes, thank you, Janet. I'll second. Okay. I think I stepped on someone there. That was me, I was seconding. Right. Second by Ms. Holland. Um, roll call, I guess? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Olette? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes. And thank uh, the members of the history board that have uh, spoken up uh, tonight and a couple weeks ago on this on this issue for for clarity thank you uh let's see uh continued discussion 200 ash street um i guess i guess uh i uh i don't know how much uh anyway a couple weeks ago i had a, a uh uh, an architect uh, that uh, specializes in historic preservation. Uh, they came out and did a walk through the uh, campus shop and uh, uh, expressed, uh, uh, spent about an hour out there. And basically the, the, the nuggets of information were that for any chance for funding would be to have that building property uh, uh, receive a, uh, uh, determination of a, a historic significance from the uh, State Historic Preservation Office. A um, couple days later, I received an email from from that uh, uh, that person, and they said uh, this project's uh, a little too big for for our our office. And they had mentioned another uh, an architect that uh, specializes in this at a much larger firm, and mentioned uh, that person's name and. Uh, uh, anyway, they ended up connecting uh, via email and looped me into it. And uh, so anyway, I got uh, uh, an inquiry from the second architect at the larger firm, which turns out to be Clark Canton Hints up in Trenton, uh, which kind of made my heart go pitter patter. But anyway, um, I uh, uh, said, thank you, but for now we're, uh, um, closing out business for this calendar year and uh, uh, we're still weighing all of our options for the canvas shop. So um, I'll, uh, if we decide to head in that direction, um, you know, may, may reinitiate that contact. So um, that's what we know right now, or that's what I know, or what uh, some inquiries that I had made. Uh, Mr. Matalevich, uh, about two weeks, a week and a half ago, uh, as a as a certified a drone operator, and he uh, offered or I or he offered to do a flyover of the rooftop since we did not have access to that uh, either. Uh, Mr. Fox's uh, evaluation of the building or or after we've taken possession of it, um, and. I've given a copy on a, on a flash drive of that video to Mrs. Lohr, and uh, I also have a second copy on another flash drive, but uh, the rooftop is in amazingly good shape. It appears that the, uh, the problems with the water leaking into it are um, in, the, in the four corners uh, of the building. They're, you know, in the older style buildings, it's got the, the scuppers that are in within the roof uh, 
bathtub as it was described and they go internal to the walls and then kick outside to exterior downspouts and it's somewhere in that internal piping that uh, the failures are but otherwise the rooftop uh, the shingles the uh, uh, rooftop uh, layment and so forth uh, really looks in very good shape so that was a nice surprise uh, from the overflight that uh, Mr. Medlevich uh, gave us you know made available so um, that's kind of the news on that topic uh, right now. So, uh, Mr. Schwab, do you have anything or anything to add to that? Yeah, well, my comments uh, follow up because uh, Mike explained some of this to me. The issue you're going to have to determine at some point is what you want to do with the property. And uh, you can, if there's some thought of reusing the property, uh, a lot of these architectural firms, and Clark Caton is a firm that we use for our affordable housing uh, work, but they're very well-known architects. Uh, if you want, the word funding means grants. And if you want to try to use someone else's money to restore the property, as opposed to using all local monies, if the intent is to restore it, then you look to get these things certified by the historic trust and then you'd be eligible for those grants and you would have to then comply with all the grant conditions as to how you would restore it. Uh, one of the things I've learned in my few decades in this is that generally it costs 50 to 100% more when you're using someone else's money than if you're doing it yourself. Uh, but if, if you have an idea that you want to reuse the building, then it makes sense to uh, look at these various options. If there is no intent to reuse the building, the feeling that if you do need a building, you'd be better off creating your own new building to meet your needs as opposed to retrofitting an existing building and having to calculate the cost not only of operations and liability and so on. Uh, you know, these are the things you have to decide, but it is an irrevocable decision for demolition. So you had a suggestion that you might want to get a, a group together of representative people in the community to have this discussion. Uh, if I, you did that, I would suggest it be done relatively soon. Uh, and if you think that you have some interest, they pointed out that to apply for the New Jersey Historic Trust designation, uh, you would, sometimes that's a, a April uh, application which means you have to move fairly quickly if you want to get in this year's uh, funding fight. But then again, as we've discovered, just because we make an application doesn't mean you get it. Uh, so it's a question of what that covers and, and what you're obligated to do. So that's the question. The question is, you have to know what you want to use the property for. Mm -hmm. Then you can determine how you would pay for it and what road you would go on. Uh, whereas if you just authorize demolition, you foreclosed the use of the building immediately. Hmm. So uh, that's, that's, I think, what those gentlemen uh, wrote last week and suggested that you at least spend some time making sure you know whether you have an interest in having the building. Then the second question is, you want that building? And then the third question is, how much are you willing to spend yeah. for one or other of those options? Yeah. So just my uh, two cents. No, it's, 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 it's a second track that uh, I, I was approaching the canvas shop as, as trying to get an idea of what, what it would cost to turn that building in, into a publicly, publicly usable space. And uh, uh, the person that, uh, that I had come out, uh, uh, that I asked a favor of to come out and, and look at it, uh, was somewhat cagey about it. Uh, they did give me a figure uh, of... Um, significant cost of several million dollars to, to turn that building around. And that was just a wild guess. Um, but uh, uh, Mr. Schwab uh, felt that, uh, that going at it from the other direction, that finding if, you know, determining if you've got the need uh, and an actual need that can support that is, uh, is probably a, a stronger way because as, uh, as some, uh, someone uh, talking about this topic told me, no one starts out with a pot of money uh, when they start a project. You start with need 
and you start with an idea and a goal and you work towards that and, uh, and do what you can to uh, scrape together the money that, uh, to accomplish that. Um, so that's something to ponder if we want to uh, so form a committee, form a, a community, uh, a public community uh, committee to look into this. Um, it shouldn't be something that's that's indefinite. We probably probably need to set some kind of time period, uh, 90 days, 120 days, to really kind of look into it and and find out the. Um, the actual needs and uses and really kind of flesh out what the cost could be uh, for this for our community. So I think that that gives the building and the community a fair shake that we've explored everything uh, before doing something. Uh, uh, if we decide to go that route, something that's irrevocable. I think, I think one big issue for me would be what if we did, how would we maintain it once we brought it up to speed with, with which I'm surely cost a few million dollars, no doubt, I'm sure. But how would the township continue to maintain it? We're not in the business of renting out real estate or something like that. We're not a real estate company, but um, so maybe you should appoint a subcommittee just so people can brainstorm and be done with it. Um, somebody would have to come up with a great idea to me in order to agree to put millions of dollars into a building. What is it going to be used for afterwards? Mm -hmm. A recreation center? How can we afford that? As uh, we would love to have one. Yeah. History board would love to have a place to display their items. I mean, all these things exist in town. All these needs, all these wants, but. The real question is, what can we afford to do? Um, so we may be able to have it restored, but what do we do after it's restored? Mm -hmm. So um, that's my question. Somebody would really have to convince me that this is something that Delanco needs and is it's affordable and we can continue to maintain it. I would like to comment. I don't think it's practical to spend a lot of times in you know, a lot of time in talking, you, you have a building in the flood zone. Uh, you know, the, the ground floor could not be reused. It would have to be uh, restructured to be raised. You have a property adjacent uh, that is a cleanup site, um, which is in question of uh, its future. So to, to spend a lot of money on restoration of that building, basically what I see is this town would like to have a community center, okay? It's cheaper to build new than it is to restore. Um, so the fact that the building was not upkept, uh, you're just opening up, you know, more apartments if you keep um, pushing it off. Okay. Well, um, I, I, I guess the, the the first question, and you know, if we want to, you know, think about this for the next two weeks, but uh, uh, maybe on the twenty first, decide whether we. We want to create an ad hoc uh, committee, a, a subcommittee, public in, you know inv invites for reps from different uh, volunteer groups, and um, talk it out, work it out, and over the next uh, you know ninety days or something like that, and, and say hey this is possible or no this uh, yeah it's nice to have but uh, for all uh, many of the reasons you mentioned John and the reasons that Kate mentions, the financial side of it. So uh, um, I think that's their first question is, do we wanna have a committee, uh, community um, board, uh, you know, just for this purpose, just to look at it. So something to think about uh, over the next two weeks before the next meeting, if you wanna proceed in that direction. But I really, for me, it's it's you know too, so many times I have people come up to me. Oh, it's a you know it's a bit neat building, and we should do this and we should do that. Uh, I don't, don't want to pull the trigger on the wrecking ball. I want us to say, okay, we really looked at this, and yeah, there's a need, but there isn't enough of a need, and we're not a big enough town that can support uh, something like this. And that's that's kind of the information that I think as a committee we should have for when those questions come up, like, you know, why do we knock the building down or why do we do this? 
Um, so that's some thoughts on that. So um, we'll come back to this on the 21st and uh, see if that's, that's what we want to do. Uh, continued discussion, fence regulations, joint uh, land use board recommendations. Um, it's like a bad penny, we're, we're, here it is again. Uh, comments on this? Um, I think the planning board came up with uh, an idea of a six foot fence up to one third the distance on the side of a building. Um, I heard feedback that the planning board, you know, some were rear, rear building line, front building line, 50%, 30%. Um, uh, Mrs. Laura circulated or Kitty circulated uh, a couple uh, cutouts from uh, various towns and it was kind of all over the place in there, front, front uh, building line, rear building line and in between, so. Uh, it was all front building line, six foot to the front building line, everybody. Right. It was. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's red. I don't think there was anyone to the rear building line. So I looked at about 10 other ones. Right. I couldn't find any I must that have weren't six foot to the front building line. All right. Do we want to mirror or adopt what the planning board recommended at uh, 33 and a third or third, you know, one third or I thought something. the actual percentage was was 30%. But M Michelle put 33 and a third. I think we had mentioned that at our last meeting that the actual percentage was 30%. So, um, are you there? I think I remember her saying something about that. I think the question is whether it should be a partial versus complete, either all the way to the front building line or the vet rear building, whether it's 33% or 30%. Doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make any difference. It's a Hard, real problem to enforce if you're going to do something maybe do 50 percent, but still that yeah. could be right in the middle of somebody's side door or something like that i mean it's kind of weird but i i, I well i've talked too much so far some other comments um i just want to say I, I appreciated getting to read the the surrounding towns takes on this um in particular like i think it was willingboro stood out to me where their ordinance began with an explanation of why it even should be regulated or why they're even taking a position on it. And I wasn't sure about the first one, personal tastes and needs of homeowner, um, but, but requiring efficiency of materials and for aesthetic considerations, making sure that it doesn't hinder public safety officials and not endangering public health or welfare. I think, I think that's it. So if we're making sure that the fence isn't hindering the line of sight, for instance, the, the corner lots, I don't see any reason that we should be regulating, you know, six feet to the, to the front foundation line, I think is how another town put it. I mean, it should go to the front yard. It, it doesn't hurt anything. It, I don't see why we would cut it in half of the yard or in a third of the yard. Um, it just, it doesn't make sense. So I, I guess I'm in favor of rejecting the, the land use board's interpretation and, and going ahead with just six feet to the front building line. Oh, John, you're muted. Are John, you? we can't hear you. <laughs> John. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry. I, I agree with Christine. And again, I went to the property in question on uh, Vine Street and looked at that situation and what is to stop the one homeowner going to his next door neighbor and saying hey could you pull a permit for a six foot fence on the backyard and you know then he could just swap out hey i'll buy the materials he gets a six foot fence in his backyard and the next door neighbor gets uh i mean the man in question gets his i had asked at the last meeting that something uh, be added to the ordinance that in the event of a corner lot that it, it would be okay as long as the uh, contingent property owner is, is in agreement. Okay. I, I have one here. I have a six foot fence. Uh, my next door neighbor would be his side yard, but it's my backyard. Uh, I, I don't, 
I don't know why we're beating this to death. Um, yeah, the, the question, I didn't see the examples from the other municipalities, but the mm -hmm. only thought I have is six foot along the side yard line, I think is less concerning from a planning standpoint than six feet that would then run from that side all the way up to the front corner of the house. No, all of our, no, it only goes six foot to the front corner. From the front corner of the house to the street is two, three, zero, all That's the lower numbers, saying, three Richard. foot. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I wish I could draw a picture for you. Um, so to take that six feet all the way up to the, to the, on the, on the property line, the side property line, take it all the way up to that point. To the sidewalk? No, nope, up to the up to the front foundation line. All right. If you draw the line across Stop the front there. Of the yeah, then then you go all the way across to the house, the actual house itself at the front corner of the house. Yeah. That's where I think the planning issue comes in more because especially in certain parts of town where you have uh, houses close together, if you have people start putting up six foot fences along that front line, it it will have a visual impact uh, over time, I think. Um, but it, it seems to me what the issue that's been driving this has been the actual side property line, not connecting right. that side property line to the to the front of the house. Right, just the privacy to the next door neighbor. Yes. Exactly. So maybe maybe that if that's part of the issue that was of concern to the board, and I don't know that either, but I could see that being a concern is do we want to say along the side property line you could do six feet, but across the frontage, um, it would remain at four. Four, yeah. But what if it abuts the neighbor's backyard? In this particular case, the, the neighbor has an ugly garage. It's, it's not. Right the, the section I'm talking about won't uh, couldn't possibly abut somebody's backyard. You're, you're talking, about, oh, you're talking about looking from the yard into the street or looking from the street into the yard, not neighbor to neighbor property lines. Yeah. But this, this particular property, Doug, his side yard is abuts to two or three backyards from Burlington Avenue, at least two that I know of. One is a single house and the second one may be a double house. So their backyard abuts to the six foot fence that he now has there. Right. And it's right. a good thing that it does because there have been problems there with those properties. But so, I think the six foot, as I recall, and I could be wrong, doesn't it end at the front property or the front? Um, it doesn't come up. It doesn't come up to the to the actual front property line. I think it's back a little bit. Uh, I, thought it was, I thought it stopped at the house, the front of the house. It's about 24 feet from the street. Yeah, but it's not at the front of the house, Fern. It sits back yeah. a little bit yeah. from the front of the house. It sits it back is. about six feet, maybe, from the front of the house. And maybe even a little more. But to me, it looks like six feet. I'm not good on, on that. But it, So it doesn't come to the very front of the house. It's not the front property line. It's back further. So and if, to we, me, if we amended the code then to do that, to allow it to come up to the front building line, as long as we're talking about the actual property line, then this person would be able to pull a permit. Yes. Yep. Yeah. But in, and I agree with not allowing a six foot fence to go across uh, par parallel to the front, front property line going right. from that that fence on the side back to the house, that it, it would have to step down in height. I thought that's what triggered this whole thing was uh, going from the house to the, uh, to the side uh, fence uh, where they have the six foot fence now with a gate. And that's what he was looking to replace. Maybe we need to clarify with that property or then because I thought it was the side property line. They want to be able to assure that they still have a, a that six foot buffer between them and their neighbor, their neighbor's backyard. 
I have a picture. There's the fence that connects the, I think they're, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Their back porch running perpendicular to the house to, to the fence that's on the side uh, property line is the same height. So under what you discussed, Doug, that would have to step down in height to, to avoid having, you know, a Berlin wall look. Yeah. The other thing I would say is that even that, and I don't have a full picture of the front of the house. Maybe I could do a, a Google Street View, but that doesn't come all yeah. the way up to the front property line. No, it doesn't. No. It comes, I don't know if you can see this, but it doesn't come up to the front of the house. It's, but it's right here. I don't know if you guys can see yeah. it. No, we got it. Cause that's, yeah. that's I, I just think that's visually, that's a big difference. I mean, and you know, everybody has their own taste, but the six foot right up at the front of the building envelope is what creates, I think, a negative visual impact over time. That situation, when it's set back some, is less obtrusive. Yes, exactly. But why couldn't he put four foot there? Why don't we recommend that he put four foot across there and then six foot along his side yard? Exactly. Yeah, that's what, it, that's what to me that, that's what should be done. It should be four foot across that piece that is half. It's actually further back to, from his house, and then six foot along the side. I saw that on Walter Avenue. Another property owner did that, and it looked it looked fine. Um, so how far up? And why? How far up do you want to allow the six foot fence to the front building line, or something in between? To where it exists now. To where it exists now. No, but when we write that. The side. The side. It would be the side yard, but this part would be four foot. I understand that. That's but, how. But where would we? To oh, the rear the building line. I think you're suggesting they can do six foot of the rear building line, but anything four to the rear building line that's parallel to the street. Could only be four foot. I think that's what's being suggested. But how far up are you going to allow the six foot on the side yard? To up meet, to the front building line. Okay. If he wants to replace this fence, I would say four foot across and six and six foot along the side because he's not obstructing any view when you look no. at his house, and he's just he's just obstructing an awful view for him to right. see. So, I mean, if he would do that, I don't see how you have to say building line, just he's trying to replace what exists. If, if somebody would go out there and take a look at this and recommend that he put four foot across that where, where it is six foot now, where you see from the front and just let him put six feet along the side and the back, I, I don't see well, a problem with that. He's not in compliance now because the six feet coat you're only allowed six foot up to the what the rear building line currently correct yes all right Earth. and he the, the current fence that they want to replace exceeds that it's somewhere in between there i think it's because he he has a deck there or maybe the a backyard. entrance all right. he so may have an entrance back there a side entrance i'm not sure but well, we, um, what if we crafted something that allowed a six foot fence up to the front building line and anything perpendicular had to be, uh, is capped at four feet? That makes sense. I thought he could already do that with the four foot fence yeah. in the front. I think, I think he can, because I know another property owner did that on Walter, but I don't think they came up to the front property line. I think it was back further. Uh, and I don't think he would want to come up to the front property line because he would he would uh, ruin he wouldn't have a driveway. Sure. Right. This is a half a double. He wouldn't have a driveway. Well, so he, I mean, yeah, I'm done talking about this. I mean, I know what I would do. I would just so I think four foot across, six foot along the back. I mean, change the if it's within. I don't say the front property line, but if it's somewhere 
less than half of the building of the house or something like his is la it's it's like a third of his house is where this fence comes up to i think who who has been in contact with uh this resident who who's been con you know raising the issue i think uh, uh jeff the zoning officer can we ask him to to state it's our intention to do something to address the the fence along the property line but that the fencing to the uh, between the property line and the house would be at four feet and see make sure that they're they understand that that's what's, right. it's coming down and that that's that's what they'd be able to do and then given where we are in the county year we would have a an ordinance ready for first reading in january all right i will ask him to do that yes all right good uh let's see that's that's all the discussion items. Um, we do have a need for an executive session. Is there anything else for the uh, the current public session of the meeting right now? Mayor, uh, just a preliminary on the 2021 calendar. Yes. That was on your discussion items. Oh, I wanted to skip that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I at, at minimum tonight, um, I would, I would uh, encourage the Township Committee to set uh, officially set a reorganization date so that the other board secretaries can move forward with, with their meeting schedule for January. All right. Uh, January 4th, the Monday, is that uh, as a suggestion? Is That's that my birthday. <laughs> All right. Party time. There you go. All right. We'll have our hats on on Zoom. Uh, yeah. And um, do you want to just finish up the rest of the year's calendar at the next meeting on the 21st? Yeah. 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 Take a look at whether or not you were willing to have the budget work sessions in the afternoon, two, three, or four, depending on your work schedules and so on. All right. the evening, or even five. All right. For the uh, fourth Monday of January, February, March. All right. So you want a 7 p.m. or a 6.30? January 4th, reorg. Uh, seven. Seven. And then, um, okay. And then on the 21st, we'll finalize the calendar. Yes. I did include a recommended calendar. One of the, uh, I think the June date, um, there is a primary in there. So that did get skewed a little bit. So, but on the 21st, we'll uh, finalize the 2021 calendar right. as well as look at what, what Richard said, what type of workshops you want to have, if you want to have them. Um, they've been, um, for the past couple of years, at 2, 2 or 2.30 in the afternoon on a particular day. Right. So you can finalize all that on the 21st. All right. And we'll have to figure out how a Zoom reorg is going to go. There are certain uh, publication requirements um, that will have to be put in place. Um, for the new calendar, including the reorg meetings. So um, we can talk about that more on the 21st also. And uh, all the RFPs for the prospective professionals are in the uh, conference room? That, yeah, that'll be in the, um, yes, the RFPs are in the credenza in the conference room and we'll discuss further in executive session, preliminary discussion on your um, 2021 appointments. Okay. All right. So, all right. I need a motion to go into executive session. And that'll be under resolution 2020-140 for executive session for attorney client and personnel. Is there any other, like for example, a litigation land issues? Yes, or land issues. Yes. Uh, and, and land, okay. So is there a motion on uh, resolution 2020-140 to go into executive session? So moved. Second. All right, I heard, okay. And we're asking the chief to stay for the beginning of that session. Yes, and also to, um, so we have a motion to go into executive session. Aaron will create the breakout session, um, which will include all township committee members, um, Doug, myself, the chief, uh, Aaron will, uh, as the operator will be there, but she will mute um, her computer. And um, 
Kitty, do you want to stay for this? Not, not unless I needed. <laughs> um, no, anything I can go over tomorrow with you um, that would need to be done as a result of uh, the executive. Okay, that needs immediate attention. Okay. Okay. All right, okay. Dennis, I'm gonna put us in the room and uh, give me one second. Okay, all in favor of adopting resolution uh, 2021 44 executive session? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. All right, so Aaron's going to set up the breakout session, which you will have to join. We have a, you, um, and you have an invitation to join that. Good night, everyone. Have a happy holidays. All right, thank Good you. Night, Harry. Good night.